This is Stephanie with Medical Scribes Training Institute. Are you a new scribe and you're feeling a little bit lost and confused and you're wondering how to keep up with scribing itself? Well, here are 10 tips for new scribes in the field. It doesn't matter if you're working in the emergency department, an outpatient center, or the hospital. These tips can apply to anyone. Number one, practice typing fast on your own. One of the most important factors of being a scribe is the ability to be very, very fast and efficient. This mostly revolves around typing. Sometimes it's really helpful to be able to type even without looking at your keyboard. So while your provider is talking to you and telling you a history, if you can be typing and looking at them at the same time, it shows that you really know your skills. This can be practiced with online typing tests at home, or just by typing up different paragraphs you find online. Tip number two, Google is your friend. There is no better resource than being able to look on the internet and Google anything as far as spelling, especially medical terminology, medications. Half the time I'm being told about a medication that I don't know very well. So it's my job then to piece together the words. So if someone's saying metoprolol to me, maybe I only really heard metoprolol. And so I'll go to Google and I'll type in whatever I heard. So maybe M-E-T-A-P-O-L-O -O, and hope that's close enough that most of the time Google populates what you're looking for. There's only so many medications in the world and a lot of times the med that you're trying to figure out will come up with the correct spelling. Now it's important to then look into the medication and make sure it's actually what was said to you and relevant to the patient and you can always double check with your provider again afterwards. Tip number three, observe everything in the room. Once you enter a patient's room, it's important to look around and get a feel for what's going on. Look at your patient, see what they look like, see if there's anything obvious that might indicate what they're here for today. Look at their vital signs. That's typically sitting on um, the vital signs machine in the corner. All of this will help enhance your knowledge for the future. Look at the room itself, see where perhaps linens and towels are located. Where's the sink? Where's the hand sanitizer? Where are the light switches? Sometimes your doctor might ask you to turn off the light so that they can look in the patient's eyes using a pen light. All of this can add up to make you an even better scribe in the future once you're paying attention to the details of the room. Tip number four, ask questions. This is one of my favorite ones because if you're not asking, you're never gonna get an answer. And you might feel like you look stupid asking things, but I promise you, this is normal. When you're new somewhere, it's important that you get yourself oriented and there's no such thing as a stupid question. If you're looking for help, just ask your provider. It's better to confirm with them than to put something wrong or put a random guess into the chart. You never want to do that. You don't want to just save face. You want to make sure you're doing your job well, protecting your patients, and protecting your providers. So just ask. Tip number five, and this might sound a little contrary to tip number four, but know your boundaries. Sometimes, unprofessional conversation might happen at work, but especially while you're a new scribe, it's important that you try not to engage in it because you want to have a neutral party. You want to give a good impression and seem professional and you, you don't want to make anyone upset. You're new there. If you get on bad terms with someone right away, that can make things a whole lot more difficult as you're already trying to get used to this new environment. So just be aware of boundaries of what seems appropriate for you and what doesn't. Now, if you feel uncomfortable in any situation, like perhaps your doctor or who you're working with is overstepping boundaries and you don't know what to do about it, that's the time to reach out to your chief scribe and ask them about it. Because at the very least, then your chief scribe knows what's going on in case some kind of unprofessional incident does occur and they know you've already reported it once. Tip number six. This one's a good one. Bring plenty of food and water. I'm serious. Your shift might be eight hours, 10 hours, or even 12 hours, and you need to stay hydrated. You need to have access to water. You will have time to sit down, and while you're charting, make sure you're just taking sips. 
It's really important. Make sure you're eating. I know that seems like the easiest thing to overlook, but just bring a power bar that you can eat in like two seconds and that's enough. You know, just make sure you're getting food. It doesn't have to be four course meals. You don't have to be eating lunch and dinner while you're there. But if you're not staying revived with water and nutrition, you might pass out. <laughs> and it's really important that you're not there just to work and be the best at work, but you're also taking care of yourself. Tip number seven, dress professionally. Now, you will probably have a uniform, either scrubs or a polo, something like that. But make sure in the healthcare field, a lot of times they like your hair pulled back because it's more sanitary and that way your hair doesn't um, shed or, or fall out in patients' rooms. It's more common than you would think it is. Make sure you always have your badge on you, your clothes are clean. If it's cold, you can bring a jacket to work. There's nothing wrong with that. It's better you do that than freeze. You could also wear a long sleeve shirt underneath your polo or scrubs. Tip number eight, learn your scheduling system, your clocking system, and how to reach fellow scribes. This one's important because you never want to miss a shift. So first, make sure you know exactly how your scheduling system works. You know what time you submit your schedule, what time you receive that finished schedule from your chief scribe, and you're immediately putting your shifts down in your calendar or however you keep track of your events right when you find them out. Because if you brush it off or think that you're keeping track and you happen to forget one, that's going to cause a whole lot of problems for everybody. It's important to have the other scribe's contact information. I prefer phone numbers because when you're working in this industry, sometimes the faster is the better, as long as you're not blowing up their phones or being unprofessional with your texts. And finally, your clocking system. Know exactly how you're supposed to be clocking in and out of work. This is important and you never want to accidentally forget to clock out of work when you leave or clock in under the wrong circumstances. So make sure that's very clear in your training. And if you forget, just follow up with your chief scribe and figure it out. Tip number nine. This is another one of my favorites. Make shortcuts. Shortcuts are the savior of the scribe world, especially when you're new. So with your trainee, or if you didn't get time with your trainee, maybe afterwards you can get in touch with a scribe and ask them what shortcuts they use. Make sure you're putting that in your text. Most EMR systems allow it. So what a shortcut is, is it's the ability to go into the EMR and create a sentence, a paragraph, something you're gonna need, save it, and we use something called dot phrases. So the dot is usually just a period. So you put a period at the start. That way you don't get your shortcuts showing up when you're not putting a period in. And then you um, follow it with something relevant. So an example I'll use is dot CXR. And that stands for chest x-ray. And finally, tip number 10, talk to other healthcare professionals. You don't have to only talk to your doctor or feel shy and put in a corner. You can talk to anyone who's working in the healthcare field, as long as they don't seem really busy and overwhelmed. If you maybe get the chance to say hello and introduce yourself to them, you can create a bond with them and you'll be able to tell over time if someone seems like they have the time to talk to you or if they're just too busy with their work. Just approach them. Find out what they do. Ask them about their role. If you have some downtime, watch how they interact with the patient. Follow them around for a little bit. For example, you might watch a tech work and learn something that you never knew about EKGs or taking vital signs. Or in the ER, techs even start IVs. And a few of them have taught me how IVs work. Or you can talk to the nurses. The nurses know different skills than the doctors. So learning from them, you might find out different things about their roles that you enjoy or don't enjoy. And of course, talk to your doctors. Figure out what they do, what they were trained in, what their day-to-day -day life looks like, which you're gonna get a sneak peek in that since you're working with them 24 seven. Talk to the PAs, the NPs, the respiratory therapists and the phlebotomists who come in. Everyone has a different role. And if you're getting to know what they are, then you're making the most of your experience there. So those are my 10 tips for newbie scribes. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Please make sure to check out Medical Scribes Training Institute for more content, subscribe, and like this video. See you next time.